Welcome to Dorky Now. My name is Sonia Mansfield, and I'm being visited by the ghost of Christmas presents right now. Joining me is my podcasting sister from another mister and the co-host of Dorky Now, Margot D. Hello, my friend. Hello, my friend. So we have decided that every year, our first episode after Thanksgiving, uh, we are going to dork out about a different version of A Christmas Carol. And I don't think we're ever going to run out. No. Ever. Impossible. I I wanted to count how many different versions there are. And it's just too many. I was like, I don't have time for this shit. So <laughs> there's, a, <laughs> there's a lot of versions of this, not even including like TV episodes. You know, like every sitcom had a like Christmas Carol themed. But we're kicking it off with maybe Margot's favorite. I'm I have a theory. <laughs> it's two thousands a diva's Christmas Carol, which originally aired on VH one. Uh in two thousand it stars Vanessa Williams and Chili. <laughs> Was it <laughs> Rosal? Yeah, from TLC. Brian McNamara. I'm like, he has a very familiar face. But I was like, who? And then Kathy Griffin and John Taylor. Yes, that John yes. Taylor from Duran Duran. So, Margot, this was your first pick uh, for our our kickoff. Why did you pick A Diva's Christmas Carol? I just find this. I, I'm First of all, I'm a big fan of the, the original story. I love all the iterations of A Christmas Carol. I have many of them on DVD. I've kept them. I just like the story of redemption. Yeah. And I like when they take like chances with it and make it a little different. I like the fact here it's an African American woman. It's got the music bent to it. Um, and at the time, this is, I can't believe it's 20 years ago oh this my. came out. I feel so fo- freaking old. But <laughs> at that time, I watched VH1 almost every night. Yeah. Like, I super was into VH1. They have behind the music. They had some reality shows. They had Flavor Flav. They had uh, Rock of Love. Oh, they used to do these. Um, uh, I love the seventies. I love the eighties. Oh. Best week ever. Like I used to watch all of that stuff. I loved I could, it. I could watch it over and over again. Yeah, like oh, the eighty, all that stuff. I got really, really hooked on it. And so they tried to branch out into movies. And the first one they did was about the band Sweetwater, which nobody knows about and nobody cares. <laughs> I um, don't even know this one. Oh, it's ba- a band that the played at Woodstock. Okay. They were the first band to play at Woodstock. And it was this multi-ethnic band, and they had a female lead singer. And she got in a car accident, and she lost the use of her voice for a few years. Oh, I don't know this story at all. Oh, yeah. But, oh, it's, yeah. but it's not a good movie, huh? I watched it like a dozen times. So, I mean... <laughs> How bad was it? But I, I was, I totally support the channel. Like if they put, and they had a, a monkeys movie, they, they've had a few, and this was one of their bigger productions. It, they didn't put a lot of money into it. They probably could have thrown a few more bucks. We'll right. talk about that. But I love Vanessa Williams. I think she's a very interesting performer. Her voice is beautiful. Mm-hmm. She's gorgeous. She can do comedy. And I love, she just plays a total meanie here. And I love it. Yeah. She's really good at that. Her, mm-hmm. this is almost like an audition for ugly Betty. Like exactly. And I really like Vanessa Williams. I, like you said, I think she's super beautiful. I love her songs. Cause I like that kind of cheesy R and B, you know, save the best for last dreaming all that mm-hmm. stuff i love that shit i love it. oh dreaming was a great song yeah like and she's she's so great and i think you can tell like she's into it like she's all in yeah and it's super fun um we don't i don't think we need to like repeat the story of christmas carol but there is a thing in this movie where they t- show her in her like girl group which looks suspiciously <laughs> like a destiny's child <laughs> but i'm not sure destiny's child was so much a thing in 2000 but um yeah like an en vogue you know uh that sort of definitely girl definitely en vogue tlc yeah yeah and, something and, along those lines and they are wearing the super like late 80s like clothes with the chains and um super big hair and like the song their big hit song was heartquake 
and that shit is fucking catchy as shit and yeah they're all doing these like super like late 80s dance moves and you can tell like they're having so much fun doing that shit it's super fun it is fun and so ebony what we meet ebony is that uh, her name is ebony scrooge i love it scrooge guys so ebony is like the biggest r&b star in the world she's like a mariah carey type she's huge and she's filming the, the, the timing here is hilarious because she's filming her video for her christmas song on christmas eve yeah I, that's when they're and she and so and she's very bitchy yell she yells that she wants french toast she wants her flip phone she's like yelling and then she's yelling at bob who's her manager and that's brian mcnamara and he's been in in a ton of TV movies. Yes. He was in Blind Date. Was that the Ethan Hawke movie? Was that him? I don't remember Blind Date, but uh, oh, I, I looked him up because I was like, I recognize that face. And I know he's that like, hair? Kind of, yeah, he's kind of like a lifetime staple. Like he was on Army Wives for like 10 years. And if you saw his face, you'd be like that guy. He was yeah. A, yeah. He was in tons of shit. His hair in this movie is <laughs> atrocious. <laughs> Oh, my God. There's a few places, like I said, that could have put a little extra time, put a little extra money into it. Yes. But he's her beleaguered manager, and he's married, and his kid, is his name Tim in the movie? Yes. Yeah. So he's married. His wife is with their son, Tim. Tim is sick with something, and he really wants dad to come home, but Ebony is like, Ebony's all about Ebony. Mm -hmm. She's on tour, and she's trying to make as much money as she can all the time. And she miracle they just create a concert out of nowhere yes. and say, We're gonna perform in New York on Christmas Day. No one wants to go to a concert on Christmas. I mean they do it's in this absurd. movie. In this movie, yes. So there's there's no time at all. And she's got like the, the accountant that looks sleazy, the business manager. Right. Like when she was hiring, didn't she know? Like, just look at him. He's gonna embezzle just, from you. Yeah, he's up to no good. But so she treats Bob like crap. She treats her band like crap. She just, um, then you get to their backstory is that in the in the 80s, she was in a girl group. Well, first she grows up. Her dad's an alcoholic. <gasps> this stuff is so messed up. The most depressing backstory. And this is a, Kathy Griffin is her ghost of the Christmas past. She's, and Kathy Griffin is hilarious in this movie. She is. She's really She's good. She's perfect. She is really, really good. So, but she's taking her through her past. She's from Jersey City or Newark, one or the other. But she's, you know, her dad was an alcoholic, left the family. She had a younger brother she was super close to. She sang in the choir. The dad comes back after he left the family. She doesn't trust him, but they go along with it. He turns to drinking again. Mm -hmm. And then her brother, we find out her brother, when he grows up, he marries somebody wonderful and they have a daughter. And then he dies. Yeah. So and there's a totally sad scene where like foster care, but child protective services comes yeah. and like physically separates these children and puts them in separate cars and takes them away. And I was like, "What the fuck is this movie?" It gets dark. <laughs> it's so dark for a TV movie that also features a cheesy song called Heartquake. <laughs> yeah. So then we find out. So then we they fast forward, and then she's in her girl group, and it's with T. It's with a Chili and this uh, other woman. What is her name? Her, uh, the actress is Stephanie. Terry. Yeah, the actress is Stephanie Biddle, who I okay. don't recognize from anything else. So Marley Jacob is Chili. Yes. And then we have Terry Freeman, and so she does the thing that Diana Ross did, which is like she takes over the group, like she just stands front and center and mm -hmm. moves the mic around so everybody focuses on her and the band we're told is that's like you said heartquake gets stuck in your head very yeah. quickly it's super catchy and then but the girls are jealous of the attention that she that uh ebony's getting and ebony's dating bob at this time and then marley we find out um marley visits her first mm -hmm. as, as like jacob marley in the movie in the original story so marley visits her and says she turns out she died in a car accident and then you find out she was on drugs and she went, got in a car accident. And she killed people along with herself. So God is putting her in chains and she's got to walk around with these chains. <laughs> By the way, she looks beautiful. <laughs> she looks amazing. I'm like, Oh yeah. Hmm. I could tell you're really tortured. <laughs> <laughs> and she says to her, 
just say, hi, I'm a ghost. I've been dead for 20 years. And just so you know, God's really upset with you. So you may want to, you know, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Yeah. And Ebony just is like, yeah, whatever, whatever. And she's just like so hyper narcissistic and, and only about herself. And then we, the best part is we get her in the modern day and it's John Taylor from Duran Duran. Mm-hmm. John and he's Taylor. So dreamy. Oh, he looks great. He does. He really does. He does. He, he aged really well. So he's plays the ghost of Christmas present and he's taking her around and she realizes that uh, Freeman or Peggy, I'm sorry, I keep talking, Terry, Terry Freeman, Terry hit the skids after she left in the a, group in a big way, in a big way. She's basically like living in, um, she's, she's in a, in subsidized housing yes. and she was having somebody who brings their meals to her. And they're like, Hey, at the church tonight, we're going to have, we'd love to have you come sing for us. And she's like, nah, I don't do that anymore. And Ebony just doesn't seem to care. And Ebony yeah. like sees that Bob's wife and son, that his marriage is like, they're, how do these people meet by the way? Like, I know. I don't, I, I wondered but, the same thing. I was like, even if when their son gets better, and I think we all know his son's going to get better, um, yeah. that marriage is not built to last. <laughs> no. Oh, no, no, no. No. Bob made some really bad choices. So, yes. So Bob is all about his work, and it's his marriage is under stress, and he lives outside of Cleveland, and the boy really needs to go to a doctor, but Ebony wants him in New York on Christmas Day. As long as, as well as the band, the band stays at a crappy hotel in New York and they make fun of her. And she finds out that her accountant is ripping her off, that it's not a real charity that she's playing for. And she also has a niece that really wants to be close to her. And Beth, Ebony could not be ruder to her. She's so rude. I'm like, her niece must be really, it's like a really good person who just is like, I understand, you know, and she'll even, she even says like, she's been through a lot. She's, you know, been through a lot of hard stuff, but I'm just going to keep asking every year. I'm going to keep asking. I'm just going to be really kind. Kill her with kindness. Yeah. That's it. That's her. And she's getting, she is married. She's married. Yes. And the guy she's married to is in that other Christmas movie that I love, starring Ellie Walker, uh, if you believe. Oh. oh, yeah. If you believe. That's right. So my Christmas worlds are all coming together. They are. Worlds colliding. <laughs> yes. So... Ebony finds out that they, her, she and her friends, they like to have Christmas. They have like play, play games, uh, charades and stuff yes. like that. And Ebony's like, now nah, that's too square. I'm not doing that. I got a show to do. Bye. And then she gets visited by the coast, the ghost of the future. And ba- and the, the funniest sequence is when they do the behind the music oh of her. Oh my gosh. It's so VH1. It's so very 2000. Too. Very appropriate. It's Brian McKnight. Mm-hmm. And and some uh, who else did they have? There? Oh, they Nile have... Rogers. Nile Rogers, who's very funny. Who's yeah, good. they're both really good. Like they are. Having... They are. Everybody's having fun with the topic, but they cut like one of the things as, as they say. Um, so Ebony dies, and then as soon as she dies, everybody's really happy because they're making money from her, and they don't have to deal with her anymore because she was so aw- awful. And there's one thing where they like they found her diary oh and they're God. reading her diary and she talks about, oh my God, I'm in love with Anne Hayes. I have I to, but I have, I have to break it up. I have to break up with Anne Hayes. Like all this, <laughs> I, that stuff made me laugh out loud. It was in my notes. I'm like, that's hilarious. Like to watch, like your nightmare play out like that. Like everybody, it turns out everybody hates you. Everyone's going to make a lot of money without you, but on you. And then to have, like, your personal diary, like, they're selling it? Like a book yeah. or something? Oh, it's so awful. It's so awful. And she's still kind of not learning her lesson. It's only until, like, she's basically being sucked into the television. Yeah. And she, and that's when, but I love it. I love it when, I always love it when Scrooge, whoever they are, like, comes around on Christmas morning. Yeah. And they're nice to everybody. I don't know. I'm a sucker for it. She wakes up. She does a TV interview. She asks what she can do. She flies Wolfgang Pluck, Puck, excuse me, yeah. to New York to cook for 200 people on Christmas. There's lots of like things that don't make sense. But she does the Christmas concert. She's reunited with Terry. And they sing on stage. And then she says to Bob, oh, by the way, you're being arrested because overnight the FBI shows oh, up. Oh, yeah, her accountant. She's arresting her accountant. accountant. Yeah. And uh, and she able she flies in um, Bob's wife and son to New York, 
and to send him to a hospital. Like, she's never even cared about this kid. Yeah. Uh, but she's doing the right thing now. She's, like, taking care of him now. But you're right. That marriage is not going to last. No. No. it Because there, there, there's a couple of weird things in the movie. And one is her relationship with Bob. Because they show that they used to be, like, he really loved her. Right. And then, and then he stays with her. And here he is, like, it's Christmas Day. His son is dying. And he's still, like working for her right and and, you know and at some point he finally like pulls it like you know decides like i'm leaving i'm going to spend christmas with my son but there it's kind of a character flaw to me that it took him that long to figure it out absolutely it is and and it seems to me that he's still in love with her so then there's like this kind of weird unresolved thing hanging around the movie with his relationship with her it and you know maybe i'm reading too much into it and i'm sure i am but it is a weird thing because his poor wife is not wrong but they're playing her like she's kind of a nag that the actress is really good i but i'm sure she like goes up to people and like i please do you understand her side i mean of course she's gonna be upset of course she's gonna yell at him i mean like you said He's calling her on Christmas Eve, like, sorry, not coming. Yeah. And and we we're told at the top of the show, like, that Ebony doesn't always pay people on time. Right. Like, what would it take for you to leave her? Like, just, she was your big client. Get another client. Like, why why is this such, why are you still managing her? Yeah. This is, it's, to- it's toxic. It's not good. But, but they that's do, not what this movie's about. Yeah. They do a good job, though, of making her, I mean, she's really shitty and she is like really tight with her money like she stays in super nice hotels but the crew and the band play in a you know they have to stay in a shithole or Mm -hmm. um what's it oh the reason terry's so poor is because terry tried to form a another band using the name desire which was their band name and ebony sued her ass off and that's why she's so poor You know, she's broke and alone in this, like, subsidized housing because Ebony sued her and took all of her money. And they make Ebony really shitty. So it's it's a testament to how much we all like Vanessa Williams that she's able to then make us like her at the end Mm -hmm. because she's done some really shitty things. But, But not so shitty that you can't forgive her. She didn't kill anybody. Exactly. I mean, she... That's what Marley did. <laughs> yeah, that was Marley for, that's for Marley. Mar- that's Marley's jam. So I have to ask you, yeah, because you only see it once. This is something I picked up, you know, because I've watched it once or twice a year every year since then. Yeah. The size of the audience, <laughs> yeah. uh, the crowd scenes, mm-hmm. uh, where did they find these people? Are they just like employees from VH1 that they just kind of grabbed haphazardly? I assume so. it's uh are you talking about the club in the in the 80s that scene or are you talking about the big concert at the end both of them yeah it's not as the club in the 80s i was like there's hard there's not that many people there but they were trying to like make it look like there were a lot of people there and i was like "Mm, it didn't really work and then the second one I didn't I didn't really notice by then I was kind of focused on her beautiful red dress. Yeah, she looked great. She looks so she, she looks really beautiful through the whole thing. She does. She's she's yeah. gorgeous. And so yeah. So that's that's something that the eighties, the night like it's so hard to like talk about this year, year two thousand. Yeah. It, but like the clothes and the style of the times, still like nineties hangover into all this stuff. Yes. You know, like the groupies, the way they're dressed and stuff like that, and the way the band is dressed. And she has a huge band. She does. Like, that's a lot of people. That's a lot. That's a lot of people for the kind of music that she's playing. Yeah. Which is, okay, so do you like the music? Uh, I I actually, yes. I actually do. (laughs) Like, this, I'm someone who loves, like, classic R&B and soul. That's the kind of shit I listen to all the time so like Vanessa Williams and this kind of music is right in my sweet spot like these are songs I would listen to and I actually liked her sleigh ride the song sleigh ride that they do I'm like 
I would download that. I'd put it on a Christmas playlist. I'm going to put it on my Christmas playlist is what I'm saying. I really they do a it. great version of that on yeah. stage. Uh, recently, They're there was a Twitter thread going around where people were asking, what is your favorite like fake song from a movie? And, oh, yeah. And most people were like, that thing you do. Cause right. Because that, that song is awesome. It's awesome. That's an awesome song. And I'm like, you could put Heartquake in there. Oh, Heart- totally. It's pretty great. It, it, no, it totally fits the time. I think so. Yeah. So you no, visit. I meant, like the song she, she was doing. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was, I was thinking like the song she does at the top, which is doing the video. And oh. I, 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 they're very forgettable. Yeah. That Okay. That stuff, not so much. Yeah. But I like the I like the Christmas song Sleigh Ride and I liked Heartquake. Yes. Yeah, those are both great and they stick in your head. So you visit this one once or twice a year. What is it about it that do you just love the look of it, the performance of it? Like you have a nostalgia for it? I think it's a nostalgia at this yeah. point. But I I do like the look of it. I mean, you could see some crappy copies on YouTube, but there's a couple of good ones. Yeah. That are really I I think it looks great. I think. Vanessa Williams is is great. I think Kathy Griffin is hilarious. John Taylor is really good. I like the band. I think they're really good. Mm-hmm. Like every, I, I find the stories are satisfying. I like it when she she shows up back at her niece's ha- house and goes to the Christmas party yeah. and she finds out she's going to be an aunt and all those kinds of things. Like it just it's a journey and it always makes me happy at the end. That's which which is why I like the story. Yeah, I I really like just it. a slice of two thousand. I liked it too. And like, you know, like I said, I'd never seen it before. So this was a first time watch. And I, I, while watching it, I was like, I can see why Margot likes this. And, and I liked it too. I was like, yeah, this is a perfectly like enjoyable version. It's got some dark parts where I was like, holy shit. But other than yeah. that, it's, I really, really liked it. And I think it's kind of bullshit that it's not streaming on a proper platform i shouldn't have to go to youtube to watch a diva's christmas carol i want to see with closed captioning so i agree with you like i want all that shit in there like but maybe it's the music rights or something maybe i'm like why isn't this on netflix or well not disney plus but even amazon prime like for why isn't it for rent at least like it doesn't have to be free just for rent all the shit you can fucking stream on these platforms and we can't watch a diva's Christmas Carol. Come on. <laughs> and I know it has fans. Like I, oh, I it does. I, I did like a little cursory like search on Twitter and there's all kinds of people who are like, why can't I stream a diva's Christmas Carol? And I was like, fuck yeah. Why can't you? That's bullshit. <laughs> I, mean, I think you found a new cause now that the election's been solved. Yeah, right. I'm going to start pouring all my money into <laughs> petitions to get a Diva's Christmas Carol on streaming platforms. Look, I just care about people, okay? And they want to watch Diva's Christmas Carol. Did you ever see Bands Reunited? That was another show on VH1 I loved. I didn't With watch it. that one, but I know what it is. Oh, it was so good. That was a, that was um, they had like a flock of seagulls and uh, Berlin and Patty Smythe and Scandal. Like VH1 at the time was cool. Yeah, was and that's it, what that that all reminds me of. Was this the same time like they were doing Rock of Love? Yeah, Rock of Love probably a few years after okay. that. But but they were they still played music videos. But it was they still. Um, it was behind the music. Like I was addicted to that <gasps> show. I watched it every week, every Sunday. I that was my appointment television. Behind the music, and I used to watch the E True Hollywood Stories. Yep, I loved all of that stuff. So I was okay when they went to the you know when they started making movies. It's just like none of them turned out very well. Right? They don't. There's just no. You could tell it's very low budget. If yeah. they had just a few more bucks, they could fix Brian's wig. They could. <laughs> put a few more people in the crowd yeah there's a few times i'm like okay this is not new york yeah i don't believe this and no offense to um the actor playing bob uh brian mcnamara they could have got someone with just a little bit more personality maybe and and the clothes like everything he's so schlubby like you just there's i mean maybe that's by design but 
at no point do you, you think that Vanessa Williams would go out with Brian McNamara. Not for a second. <laughs> no, and I'm like, I'm sorry, Brian McNamara. I'm sure you're a perfectly nice man. It's not you personally. It's it's your character. It's Bob Cratchit. You never believe that she would go out with Bob Cratchit. Was or he that... in Blind Date? I'm going to look this up. I'm trying to remember a... what movie you're talking about. Blind it's Date. It's with Ethan. I'm thinking of when I think of blind date, I think Bruce of that. Willis. Yeah. No, let me see. Uh, let me see. It's uh, it's uh, Brian McNamara. Oh, Ethan Hawke. Ethan. They play brothers, and his brother is trying to set him up on a date. Mystery a date. Mystery date. Brian McNamara is sexy and funny in that movie. <gasps> well, like, now I want to watch Mystery Date. You do. Oh, it's good. It's I love it. But it's like everything. Yeah. He no. He he betrays all of that in this performance. In okay, a Christmas Carol. So, what, so Steve I would, is Christmas Carol. Would I like a mystery date? I'm gonna write it down. Mystery date. You know what? Yeah, because it's set in San Francisco. <gasps> okay, now and, I'm really yeah. sold. Yeah, and it's got um, Heather. Um, Heather Graham. Yes, it's got Heather Graham, Ethan Hawke. Um, I'm trying to think who else. But anyway, all right. It's really. It might be dated. It's very. It could be very eighties. I'm sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I used to like when I would go to the theater. It was like the two dollar theater. That was yeah. one of the places that they played it. And I would watch it. I watched it a few times. Uh, what is your favorite version of Christmas Carol? I assume you've read the book. I haven't read the book. Or yeah, like yeah. That, so. We did it for book versus movie. Um, I have so many of them. I like um, the uh, Mr. Magoo. Hmm. That's a that's a really good one. I like American Christmas Carol with Henry Winkler. I like Christmas Carol with Sir Patrick Stewart. We watched that one last year, and I thought it was really, really good. And what's the one, Alistair? Um, ah, the old one that everybody likes the best. Oh, what year was that? It's not in like, like the 30s or 40s. It's like 38, I think. Let's see. Christmas Let's Carol. Look I'm looking it up. 1938. Yeah. And it is. Where's the cast? Damn it. <laughs> oh, God damn it. No, um, Alistair Sim. Okay. Uh, there's a 1951 version. Uh, there's also one with George yeah. C. Scott. Oh, the Muppet Christmas Carol. What are we even talking okay. about? So we will do the Muppet Christmas Carol one at some point because yeah. I have like a couple of favorites and I think the Muppet one is legit great. Oh yeah. Michael Caine. He's doing it. He's yeah. going for it in that one. I love it. And I, I love, and you do not love uh Scrooged. Scrooge. I used to love Scrooge. I think, I don't know why I got to a point where I couldn't watch it anymore. It is. It's, it's pretty mean. Yeah. It's pretty mean spirited. Um, yeah. But I think because I watched it a lot, it played at my movie yeah. theater. I mean, well into like February, it was still playing in my theater, so I saw it a lot. So I think I I watch it with some nostalgia glasses for sure. But I think the Muppet Christmas Carol one is super awesome. Yeah, it's great. I'm going to show that one to Calvin. Is there anything else we should talk about with Diva's Christmas Carol? I think this is a great one to kick it off. I oh, really I'm do. glad you liked it. I really did. And that's yeah. why I'm so mad that people can't stream it. I'm not so well, mad. I'm not going to like lose sleep over it, but <laughs> it's kind of bullshit. That's all. Do you want to hear about some of the other top TV shows of the 2000s? Oh, I love that. Yes. Please. Okay. Um, this is in no particular order. So Temptation Island. <laughs> I thought you might get a kick out of that one. Fox had the worst reality shows. Oh, which one was this? Well, so Temptation Island was like, we put these couples on an island with other beautiful people, and then we tempt them to cheat. <laughs> it's a, it was a bullshit show. They also had, like, Bachelorettes in Alaska, where it's like, you know, they send, like you know, three beautiful women up to, like, a city full of men and turn them loose. You know, just off. They always, like, stuff about, like, who's your daddy? Like, ones where people take paternity tests. It's bullshit. <laughs> Fox is the worst. The worst. But Temptation Island was one of those. It's really bad. Uh, Will and Grace. 
was very popular. Yep. The West Wing. Yep. Love the West Wing. Crime Scene Investigation, CSI, the original. CSI. I, I was My- super into the first CSI for a long time. Same here. I watched it every week. I thought it was a great cast. It was really, for the time, it was yeah. like really fast paced and innovative and I loved it. Yeah. And it was also, I was fascinated by it because it was like a science thing. They didn't run around with guns, although I think they eventually turned into that. It was like, and then we pulled these fingerprints and we pulled some blood and you're guilty. Like <laughs> I was super into it. Uh, the practice. Oh my God. Do you remember? Dylan McDermott? Yeah. Yeah. It was him. That, there was like the practice, Ellie McBeal and Boston legal. Yeah. Yeah, we're trying all, to show that lawyers aren't assholes. Yeah, it was, all, and they were all like David E. Kelly shows. They were all like kind of connected, but I wasn't like super into the practice, but I know people loved it. I did love this one, Law and Order. I still love it, Me but too. it's it's very. If you go back to one of the old ones, especially like uh, the mid nineties, the, they are some of them really do not age well. Mm, interesting. Yeah, I go back and see it or an old law. I love SVU. I was really into SVU for a while. And every once in a while, they show one from back in the early days. You're like, oh, God, you would never do that now. Interesting. I was, yeah. I, I watch some SVU, but not as often as I watch regular Law and & Order. And I, I like how predictable it is. And mm-hmm. you know, at like the 20-minute mark, we're going to move to the arrest. And then we're moving okay. to court. <laughs> so who is your favorite duo? On Law and Order. Hmm. God, this is very good questions. Um, I really like Jerry Orbach. Same. And then I kind of liked him with Benjamin Bratt. Interesting. I can't, you know, I would have to think about it. I would have to make a list and really think about it. This is a serious question, but that was like my gut instinct was to go there. No, was, you always have to go with your gut. Yeah. What was yours? Briscoe and Green. I like them. Um, and then oh, I that's like Jesse Martin, right? Jesse Martin. Yeah, I, I liked him too. Love him. And then I loved it when, uh, what's her face? Uh, she plays Allie. Uh, God, what's her name? The, the prosecutor. The mean one. Um, Angie Harmon. Angie Harmon. Oh, my God. I loved her. I loved Angie Harmon too. Yeah. She was so good on that show. And I love Sam Watterson. She was so mean. And Sam Watterson's always great. I just, I loved Law and Order. It is one of those, it's just one of those shows that I would watch it right now. If it's on, I'm like, sweet Law and Order song. Um, (laughs) Everybody Loves Raymond. Very funny show. Friends. Eh. I'm like, I I watched Friends. It's it's fun. Uh, This show was on like three nights a week. Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Do you remember that? It was oh my in, God, that was such a thing. In, every night, every night I turned on the TV, I was like, oh my God, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire is on again. <laughs> it was on every night. It And I watched it quite often. It was it was super fun. Uh, ER. Oh I, God, I was really into ER for a while. I loved ER. Yeah. And then number one was Survivor. I liked Survivor the first couple of seasons. Yeah. I, I just, I have friends that never miss it. That and The Amazing Race. Like, yeah. those are their shows. I don't watch them anymore. This, I, I don't, there's too much to watch. Yeah, there's the, um, this is the first Survivor. The very first Survivor. With Richard? Yeah. I didn't, but I didn't really watch it. I wasn't, like, which is funny because I was actually, like, working TV critic at the time. So, like, I I knew survivor was a thing like i saw the first episode and i was like yeah sure and it but it was huge everyone loved survivor i was like meh it wasn't my jam it was different for the time yeah there's a lot of those kind of shows now where they it was interesting to watch people totally devolve into like nakedness and starvation (laughs) and cruelty that was it was novel at the time now now we get the yeah we get it all the time i really liked amazing race that's the one that i used to super love yeah because it took you around the world yeah. and they were problem solving. Like you had to be clever. Yeah. I really, win. I like that one. Yeah. And then, you know, we've talked about this before. I, I liked American Idol. That was my other one too. And I used to vote every week. Cause I was like, why would you watch it and not vote? I don't understand. 
That wasn't my jam. I know. It's because it's Sorry. awful. It's because it's awful. It's an awful no. show. I realize that. I have friends who are just like, I don't watch any of the singing shows. And they're like, but you're really into music. I'm like, I don't. Yo, I like my famous people. Yo, that's, <laughs> that's why I don't watch it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't watch any of that anymore, though. I gave, I stopped. I gave it up so, cold turkey. So I went to Wikipedia and I was trying to find the top holiday songs of all time. <gasps> Ooh. And there's a few different lists. So I decided just to pick a few. And some of these I don't even know. But here we go. So Band-Aid, Do They Know It's Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Whew. Problematic. That song is uh, well-intentioned. Let me say that. <laughs> I loved it when I was a kid. Yeah. I had the 45. Like, everybody bought it. It was one of those. It was like, it sold like 14 million copies or something yeah. ridiculous like that. Yeah. But you look at it now like, boy, that's colonialism gone wild. Yeah. Don't you don't guys know it's Christmas? Don't you know it's no. Christmas there? You y'all don't celebrate Christmas? What's, What's up with that? With you? <laughs> white Savior Syndrome. Mm -hmm. Um Bing Crosby, White Christmas. It's a good song. It's a great song. Wham, Last Christmas. I love that song. So much. Love it. Jose Feliciano, Feliz Navidad. I love that one too. That's an earworm. You get that in your head. Yeah, oh. it's unfortunate. It will stay in your head. Oh, this is from, I think, the Grinch movie, Faith Hill, Where Are You Christmas? Oh, I don't know that song. It's sad. It's a sad Christmas song, but it's good. Is it the Grinch movie, the one with Jim Carrey? Yeah, yeah, the live action one. It's I not that, that great. I hate that one. That is the physically ugliest movie. That's physically the ugliest movie I, I think I've it. ever seen. The art direction is so horrible, and the makeup is terrible. Yeah, you know it's really bad. But if you want to see um, some good Grinch, a good Grinch movie other than the original animated one, which is great, um, there was a an animated one that came out like two years ago with mm -hmm. Benedict Cumberbatch as the Grinch. It's really good. Calvin watched I it last year, and I was like, "Holy shit, this is actually really good." <laughs> I really liked it. I'll definitely check it out. I like the Grinch story. Yeah. It, it's, I think it's a good one. I, I really enjoy I was pleasantly surprised. So please, okay. there you go. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Uh, Brenda Lee, Rocking Around the Christmas Tree, yeah, one of my favorites. Yeah, that's a good one, too. This one was a big seller. I don't remember it all, but I'm not a just I'm not a believer. I don't know Justin Bieber's music, but he had a song called Mistletoe. I don't know. Supposedly that. I don't fucking know it either. Okay. I, and the number one song, well, it probably would be White Christmas by Bing Crosby, but right up there is Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You. I, I love I, that song. I love that song. I love it. I don't, I'm not pretending. I don't believe in guilty pleasure, guilty pleasures. You love what you love. I super right. love that song. It's so cheerful. It's so cap, it just so catchy and yeah. fun. It's just everything you want in a good pop song. I think so. I really love it. This makes me, yeah. your list makes me want to drag out my holiday playlist that I made last year and start updating. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to do right after this. What else are you dorking out about, Margo? So I'm not normally a fan of Frank Zappa. Uh, mm. He's... I find him pretentious, and he's also, it's like every guy that I had a bad relationship with was a Zappa fan, so <laughs> at some point, I yeah. was like, Ugh. But there's a documentary that's out about him right now, and Alex Winter from Bill and Ted, yeah. he directed it, and it's really interesting. He was a very interesting man, and he had a really interesting career, and he took a lot of chances. And I, I, I respect his artistry much more now, but I also didn't realize he was 52 when he died. Oh my, I didn't know that either. That's super I young. Know. I'm like, holy shit. Like those kids were young when they lost their dad. Oh, how, uh, what did he die of? Cancer. Oh, fuck cancer. He was, yeah, he was a heavy smoker, <laughs> but I think there was something else too. But, yeah. um, but there's no interviews. The only bummer, I mean, they have all the music, which is great. And they have a lot of video. And they interviewed Gail, but I thought Gail passed away. I think mm. passed away a few years ago. But anyway, supposedly Amit and Dweezil are not getting along. Mm. And Amit owes the rights to the song, but Dweezil's the one with the musical talent and can play it. 
So Dweezil has to use another name when he goes on the road. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's crazy. But I was so bummed out because I love Valley Girl and I love Moon Zappa. Yeah. I think she's amazing. They're not interviewed. None Uh-oh. of them are interviewed. That's the one thing that's kind of like, a, oh, I wish they could have. Because her segment is great. I love Valley Girl. I yeah. Love all of that shit. And I thought she was so cool when I was a kid. I thought she was just ugh, the epitome of yeah. cool. Yeah. Where did you but watch this? Where Where is it streaming? It's it's a uh, movies on demand. You know, okay. on, for me on Spectrum. But it. it's if you like a music biography and if you're just interested, it, I mean, he's they they do a warts and all portrayal. I mean, he wasn't a great person to everybody. He slept around a lot on his wife and mm-hmm. was rather obnoxious and sometimes super condescending, which I have a hard time with, but. I do get it now, like, what people like about him. I, to- I totally understand. It's not, like, my thing, but I totally get why people are into it. Yeah, Frank Zappa is not my thing either, but actually my husband likes Frank Zappa, so I'm writing I this. I knew it. Yeah, you're all, of course he does. <laughs> David has a much more, what's the word I'm looking for? Let's just say different. He has different musical tastes than I do. <laughs> right. Oh, Whereas yeah. I'm super mainstream and poppy, and he's more... You know, I really like the kinks and Frank Zappa and all that. So I will put this down and yeah, he will, yeah, he'll want to watch it. Interested. Yeah, I'd be interested in what you had to say about it. I will keep you posted. Tonight, actually, we're going to watch the finale of The Great British Baking Show. <gasps> I've so, been saving it. Yeah, so um, as of the recording, I don't know who won. But one of the things I'm dorking out about is the winner from season nine is Kim Joy, one of my favorites. And she has a new cookbook out and it's called like Christmas with Kim Joy. And it is filled with the most adorable everybody drink recipes (laughs) ever. Like they're so cute. And what I so the photography is adorable. Once again, everybody drink. It's, you know, all cookies and cupcakes and cakes and all these things and if you watched her season you know like she's uh so good at like decorating things and making them look so so cute and one of the things I love about her cookbook is almost all of her recipes she offers a vegan alternative so it's like if you want to make this like shortbread here's how you can make it if you want to make it vegan do this and this and this so I'm a high maintenance vegan, so I like that. It, but it's I'm actually not high maintenance. I'm the lowest. No, you're not at all. I'm the lowest maintenance vegan of all time. I should start a new Instagram. It's like low maintenance vegan. <laughs> you know what? You'll know that shit to yourself. That's a good idea. I'm like, I would be really good at it because that's what I am. But anyway, it's it's a really good cookbook. I love cookbooks anyway. Just I like reading them and looking at the pictures and getting ideas, even when they're not vegan, and this one's really great and I also wanted to mention I've been watching still The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City and reading the recaps on Vulture and that shit is hilarious it's the best so if it's the best yeah if you are watching The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City I think the author is Olivia Crandall Mm -hmm. is doing these recaps of Salt Lake City and that shit is so funny and it's just like a little like after dinner mint to the episode (laughs) like it just like ties it all together i just love it so much it made me laugh so hard it shows those those bitches be cray they're crazy they they are but in the most amazing way yeah and yeah i mean there's a woman who's married to her (laughs) step-grandfather let's all take advice from the lady who married her own grandpa (laughs) but it's funny because she's like People say it's weird, and it is weird. Yeah. I get it. Like she's she's a little more, but she does. She has a son with him, and he's seventeen. He has a girlfriend, so she wants to send him off to boarding school <laughs> just because he has a girlfriend. Right. Like, aren't you going to miss him? Like, what are you what are you doing? But anyway, that's what makes the show great. They're they're all kooks. Almost yeah, all of them. They're all kooks. All but kooks. I'm really enjoying it. So thank you, Margot, for helping me get on the Real Housewives <laughs> train. And but if. If you're watching, you should read the recaps on Vulture. It's they're so fun. They have great writers there. They really do. They do. I know that people. My friend Kate loves the Real Housewives of New York and the recaps that are on Vulture. Like she swears by them. Yeah, Brian J. Moylan. He's a an amazing writer. He's very very funny. I should start reading those too. I'm still mm-hmm. I'm still working my way through the last season of. 
Real Housewives of New York. So I should read those too. I'll put it on the list. <laughs> Where can people find you on the internet, Margot? On social media, you can find me at Brooklyn Fitchick, mostly for Twitter and Instagram. And my blog is brooklynfitchick.com. And if you like the sound of our voices, you can also find us at whatacreeppodcast.com, where we talk about a creep every week. And then we end the episode with someone who's not a creep. And it's super fun. Please listen. Yes, it is. It, it doesn't sound like it's fun. It is really fun. And you can find me at thesoniashow.com and the Sonia Show on Twitter and Instagram. And you can find Dorking Out at dorkingoutshow.com. And if you want some stickers, they're really, really cute. And we got new, we got a new logo actually. So I'm going to, you know what? I have to make new stickers. I'm writing this down. New stickers. Yep. But if you want some of the old stickers, get them while they're hot <laughs> because we're going to have <laughs> new stickers soon. Um, and if you're listening on Apple Podcasts and feeling generous and want to give us a five star review, I'll be your best friend. And this was super fun. I'm super glad that we talked, that we kicked off our new thing, our new tradition. And that we kicked it off with Diva's Christmas Carol. It's awesome. I feel like your IQ points are going down being friends with me. Because like, I'm always <laughs> introducing you to the cheesiest shit ever. <laughs> that is not true. You are. <laughs> you have done nothing but make me a better person, Margot. Aww. You are my ghost of Christmas present. <laughs> Thank you.